I will add some commentary later. And now, what about keyboard cam? Okay, yeah, let's do it like that. Hello, Camille from the future here. The first problem kickstart is this. We are given a string, a quite long one, and we need to count such substrings that they start with word kick and end with start, with five letter substring start. And this given string is long enough that you cannot iterate over all the substring and check each of them separately. You need to do something smarter. But before I tell you a solution, uh, I will comment a little bit on what you should do at the start of the contest. You can see me now typing, the reading the input, the number of test cases, and uh, reading every test case, printing that strange output stuff, case, hash, number. I should have prepared that before the contest and just copied it and prepare four files, a.cpp, b.cpp, c and d. This is C++, by the way. So this one minute you're seeing right now, it's time wasted. I should have done it in advance. And now the real contest starts before because I have a.cpp and I can implement my solution. Yeah, uh, We can detect substrings that match those given in the statement, like kick and start, uh, by just taking a substring and comparing with a word. And uh, here's the thing. Whenever we have start, and I, I want kick combined with start that is more to the right. Whenever I have start, I wonder what's the number of kicks on the left. So for this start you see right now in the middle, uh, it produces two valid substrings because it can be combined with the first kick, like this, or with the second one, like that. So if I pre-compute the number of kicks in some prefix, like the number of substrings kicks so far, whenever I have a substring start, I will say just answer plus equal the number of kicks. Just like that. And instead of going once through a string from left to right, I see that Camille during a contest he created some prefix sums. That's just unnecessary. Uh, let's see what he's doing. Yeah, we have prefix sums. Whenever something is equal, kick increase there. So prefix sums will tell us up to this point what's the number of occurrences of kick. Uh, you need to be careful about indices, not to go outside of string to get some runtime error. And then iterate for a string again, I see. If the substring is equal to start, then to the answer we will add the number of kicks so far. Uh, fortunately for us, kick and start, they are completely separate strings. If the statement was a bit more kind of malicious, they could ask about starting with, let's say, ABA and ending with BAD then you need to be careful whether they can intersect or not, whether you sh should count it or not. Yeah. This was supposed to be an easy problem, uh, didn't uh, give me much trouble. And you can see that instead of waiting for verdict, I just straight jump to the second problem, to problem B, maximum coins. You don't want to waste time waiting for verdict and losing precious minutes if you want to win the contest. Okay, problem B, maximum coins. There is a grid a square grid n by n and you start in some cell and after that you can go top left or bottom right from it so from that starting red cell you could go here maybe then go back go here bottom right and then also visit this one so cells you could visit create a diagonal some other possibility is start here and just go there in every cell there is some number of coins and you want to collect as much as you can so if we see the example in this one, uh, it's optimal to take 1, 6 and 7, because they are on the same diagonal. But how to detect that some numbers are on the same diagonal? It's better to look at this drawing. If we focus on those blue cells here, oh, uh, sorry about that, if you focus on blue cells, then uh, it's like this. The first one has row 1, column 3, the second one is row 2, column 4, and then the next one would be 3, 5 and so on. Both row and column increase by one as you go through the, such a diagonal. So they have the same difference, row minus column, and that's what you see in my code. I map all the cells according to the difference, row minus column. I say that all cells with the same difference, row minus column, they create the same group, and I sum up values uh, on those cells, and I say that's possible answer, that's possible number of coins I get. We have a quick look at mm, a verdict for A. 
I saw that accepted, nothing is wrong. If something was wrong, then this was uh, this would be the moment when I correct it. Uh, and instead of waiting for verdict for B, whether it's accepted or wrong, let's jump to C. C is quite standard, I didn't think more than like five seconds during a contest what to do here, where in a moment you will see past me thinking for a moment. Uh, first, well, which of two possible approaches is to take? And then also mm, what exactly to implement, because it's very dangerous there to get all indices right. It's very easy to make some off by one errors. Uh, okay, uh, the code for now is just reading n and k and then reading the input, mm, some array. But let me explain what we're supposed to do in this problem. We have some mm, sequence. Uh, let's say that it's, uh, I will take an example, 2, 9, 3, 8. And you want to make all those numbers equal by increasing you, in one move, you can increase or decrease a number by one. In this case, it seems reasonable to make all of them equal to maybe five or something like that. If I want to get sequence 5555 from uh, 2938, I will need three operations for on the first number, four operations on the second number, and so on. We want to minimize the total number of operations. Turns out that it's equally good to, instead of going to 555, to just go to one of those input numbers. It isn't worse. Actually, it's optimal to take the median. If you grab all those input numbers, if you sort them and take median, so the middle element, it's best to go there because all smaller numbers, they just need to go up to that number, bigger to those. It's, to understand this, to understand the proof for why it's correct, it's best to uh, make a drawing. If this is like two, three, eight, nine, 2, 3, 8, 9, but of course there could be more numbers. Then uh, 2 and 3, they will need to go to the left, to the right. 8 and 9, they will need to go to the left. And if you say that this is the meeting point, you can as well shift this meeting point to the left. If the meeting point is here or even here, the answer is the same. Because 8 and 9, they both need to go further to the left, but 2 and 3, they save time save operations thanks to not going further to the right. So no matter what you choose here, this is all like kind of between two medians, it's all the same. Because by shifting to left or right, you save some work for two items and you uh, increase the work for two other items. If there were five items, like let's say this, one, two, three, four, five, then this would be the only optimal point. By, for, for now, I cheated a little bit. It's not that this is the statement. Actually, the uh, numbers from the input, they represent some positions on a circle. So there is a circle. Now we have some numbers like 2, 3, 8 and 9. And now in one operation, you can shift it something by one and you want to make all of them to be in the same position. The tricky part is, of course, there can be a lot of points. The tricky part is, it's now incorrect to just look at them as, for example, a sorted sequence and uh, say that they meet in the middle. For those, for this example I drew, it's very stupid to say that I know this is the middle because it's the middle of two, three, eight, nine, and maybe a few other points. But here, maybe this is optimal somewhere here. So it might happen if there is some meeting point. But again, in similar way, we can prove that meeting point can be just one of the input points because otherwise shifting is like, doesn't mess up the answer and they will shift to towards it. For every number to say where it should shift, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, I can just uh, find direction in which you have it closer to the meeting point. So if on exactly the opposite side of the circle, I cut it, then this half will go counterclockwise and this left half, it will go clockwise. Mm, OK, but the number of numbers in the input is big, like 100,000 or maybe even bigger. Uh, so if you want to consider this is bad, n square is too slow. And this means that you cannot consider every point to be the meeting point and then like sp split the circle and compute the distances. We need to be smarter about it. 
I will reach complexity of n, but also n log n is possible and it will be perfectly fine. But this is what I'm aiming for. And yeah, so far Camille from the Countess didn't write uh, too much code. We see that after reading the input, there is sort of vector a, sort of the input, and then something. And the best answer is infinity, and then we have some L, R, and current. Let me explain it. And I have a lot of time because Contest Camille spent a lot of time on this problem, sadly. Mm, yeah, we have a circle, but in, imagine that this is a line, because for line it's much easier to to do anything. And imagine that we know that the meeting point is here, then we know that we should split exactly on the opposite uh, in the circle, so if this is point A, then this is point A plus circle size divided by 2, circle size is given in the input, and we know directions, for each point from here you will go to the right, from each point from here you will go to the left, and from each point to from the that rightmost part, you will go to the right, to wrap around the circle. Okay? This time, my goal is not to only take the median, but to consider every point from the input as the possible meeting point. Okay, for each from those uh, positions i on the left, I need to take the, my current position, and in code I marked current as me, basically it's like my position. Uh, for each thing on the left, I need to add my position, so me, minus ai. Something like that. This is for every point on the left. This is just the difference of distances. What about every point on the right? Useful. It will be useful to grab another color for this. For this point, ai, I need to add to the answer a of i minus me. Because now this position is bigger than me. And just for clarity, me should be red because it denotes this meeting point. Finally, what happens for those points on far right? For this point, you need to go to the right, and your distance will be, your cover distance will be circle size minus ai, minus your position, plus me, because after going to the end, I additionally need to get to the red point. And all of this I wrote down on a piece of paper. I don't think it's visible, but yeah, it's th this drawing with colors is what I had on my piece of paper just without drawings. And mm, my solution is, as I move the red meeting point, me, to the right, this, this guy, I will update the sum over those values. The sum of white, uh, blue and yellow is the answer, is the sum of distances of everything to the meeting point. And when I shift the meeting point a little bit to the right, this split also will shift. Some, some yellow points will become blue. Obviously, some blue points also become white eventually. White means on the left. And I need to just update in some sum. And in my code, you will see value current. Current is that current sum, the, the sum of distances to the current meeting point. And yeah, it's just that if a moment ago some blue, there was a blue point, and it added this to the answer, and now I know that now it becomes white, so it now needs to be taken with minus, minus ai, and then I will just update the value current appropriately. I will have two pointers, actually in a moment we'll see three pointers. Pointer for me, pointer for this, the, the opposite, the split point, and also pointer for the left half, because not only we have this drawing, uh, also once we go enough to the right, if my meeting point is here, then this is the split point. So I have, let's say, light green here. There are some points here. And also we can figure out the formula. Here the formula will be what? AI, because we travel to the left, plus circle size minus me. So whatever, doesn't matter exactly. I will just code it, <laughs> in whatever the formula would be. There is one issue with updating all of that. The issue is that when meeting point shifts by one to the right, 
uh, for every other point, for every i, the formula changes because me changes. So instead of going through all the positions i and updating them, that would be in square. n times i shift the meeting point by 1, and uh, then this is updated for every other i to update the current sum. No, instead I just maintain the sum of those terms, ai. Current is the sum all terms is except for me. So let's from this remove me, and let's say that current maintains the sum of those not crossed out terms. Mm. Also, contest Camille right now debugs something. Uh, the debug function, it prints some stuff. I I see that on sample test, something is wrong. I print 722 instead of 2 and 8. Then I print for every meeting point what happens, what are my pointers, what is my current sum, and count min minus I will explain in a moment. And this way I'm trying to find the first position where something is wrong. Where, oh, on a piece of paper, I got that current sum should be 5, but it's 7. Mm. Yeah, uh, let's continue here. So what about the values me? Sometimes they are with plus 1, sometimes, sometimes they are added to the answer, sometimes they are subtracted. But it's enough for me to know how many times it should be subtracted. So additionally, in my code you will see count minus. How many, th this basically means how many blue points there are. Because for every blue point, I know that I need to subtract me from the answer. Let's figure out some final formula. I need, there is sum, current, plus me is multiple, me is also added some number of times to the answer. We'll figure this out in a moment. And minus me times, me times the count minus. This is the number of blue points and actually also the number of those uh, light green points, because they are also, their meme is with minus. Uh, what's this blank? This is just um, n minus count, where count was the number of points with minus, so this is the number of other type of points. Actually, I think n minus 1 minus count. n minus 1 is the number of remaining points, that many of them should be counted with minus, that many of them with plus. And yeah, that's the formula. This is what you will see in count. Or maybe I grab those two brackets together, count and n minus 1 minus count. Uh, yeah, this with minus, so it will be n minus 1 minus twice count. This is somewhere in count. Uh, yep, so the value current should represent all those not crossed out values. As I move pointer me to the right by 1. The current sum doesn't change a lot. I just need to check if the split point. And the right split point I denote as R, the left one as L. After I shift me by 1 to the right, I also see if R needs to be updated. If yes, move R by 1 and update current. And update the count minus. Okay. Contest Camille uh, is closer to uh, correct answer because I see that there is 2 and 2 instead of 2 and 8. And this debugging was about printing stuff. Uh, here I see additional print. Uh, I, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, I wanted to print for every meeting point what's the value I'm getting. So let's create a variable maybe for that. Print it. Run again on samples. Okay, I see that here it's 8, 10, 8, 2. So only for the last meeting point I've, I got answer 2. And that should be impossible. The best answer is 8 in this problem. And then it's about figuring out uh, figuring out a mistake. So just comparing with paper where there is like minus instead of plus or where I should say, uh, for example, circle size or minus circle size. That's some, um, it's not very interesting. But will he get it? Hmm. I don't remember if it will be like in one minute or not. But I think there is just one mistake left. Let's see. Also, still up to this point, I didn't look up the verdict for the previous problem B. That would be just a waste of time and, you know, switching context. It hurts. It takes time. If you are focused on solving C, keep solving C and only after you're done, take a look at B. This doesn't apply if there is a chance that you will not solve C. In Google Kickstart, your score is 
the, your number of points, but ties are decided by the last submission. So if there is a chance that at the end of the contest I'm only I only solved A and B, then I care what's the time of solving A and B. But here, if I want to solve everything, I just care about doing it fast. If there is a chance that I don't do C, then I would earlier jump to B and make sure that it's correct. If needed, I would uh, correct it. Another thing is that I went for the first place. I wanted to get the first place. So, um, you know, you need to take some risks to save those precious seconds. Mm. Okay, is past Camille done with debugging? Current minus equal, yeah, yeah. So every line like current minus minus al, it's cancelling some type of point, like blue point changes to white. So I need to subtract this value because it was added to the answer earlier and add this one. We have a submit, finally. Uh, yeah, I quickly jumped to B to see that it's correct. And here, because C took me so much time, it will not hurt me that much to spend a few seconds waiting. I, I thought that there is big probability that I have overflow or something similar. So there is big probability that I get wrong answer. Then I waited those few seconds without starting D. Also, this D must be more difficult problem. It's the last one. So uh, I would expect that one to take me half an hour. It, it will turn out, you can see by length of the video, that it will take me five minutes. So three times less than problem C. We're given a sequence like maybe two, five, four, doesn't matter too much. And repeatedly we take two neighboring elements, we add them and we replace them with just the sum. And the sum is also added to our score. Later we repeat that. So from seven and four, well, now 11 it would be the final thing. And we finish once we have just one element. Uh, and the question is, if we randomly choose an adjacent pair of numbers to merge, so initially if the sequence is of length 3, then there is 50% probability for this merge, 50% for this merge, then we would have 2,9. Uh, then what's the expected value of total score if you simulate over all possibilities? And there is a subtask with n up to 9. In this case, you, I think you can consider all possible scenarios because there are n minus one splits, right? If there, for example, if there are five numbers, one, two, three, four, five, or let's say seven, then the first merge can happen anywhere in one of those six positions. You can think about it like this and it will help in solving the full problem. There are six split points. In one move, we erase one of them, a random one, and this way we combine those two uh, numbers and the sum of them is added to the score. Then maybe we erase this one, then this one, this one. And if a moment ago I removed this guy, then the sum of all of those is added to the score. Why for n up to nine we can do brute force? Because um, there are, for the first move, there are n minus one possibilities, then n minus two, n minus three, and so on up to one. This is n minus one factorial, so let's say n factorial, and that's of magnitude million for n around nine. Well, with expected value, we care about how much every value from the input contributes to the answer. This is why way to think about it. So if I focus on a single value like this one, I wonder what's the probability that in the very first move it will be part of stuff added to the answer? Well, that would be easy because in the first move either if we do this, th those two elements, or those two elements, then this value in particular will be added to the answer, along with a neighbor. But for a neighbor, we will separately add it to the answer with proper multiplier. But then after second step, third step, it becomes much more complicated. So instead, I think about those split points, and I say that if brute force is just random order of removing those, then in the if I focus on any element x, uh, here's what happens. I wonder, or maybe uh, not exactly this, I instead focused on every split point. Let's grab this split point, the blue one. And I wondered, once I remove it, I care what 
all their splits were already removed. Let's say that this guy is removed, this guy is removed, and this guy is removed. Then to the answer we will add some of those values, red points. Uh, here's the solution. I iterate over split points. For every split point, iterate over values, and let's focus on this value x. What's the probability that once we when we remove this split point, we x will be part of stuff added to the answer? Well, for that, I require those red smaller split points to already be removed. What's that probability that among three split points, the white one will be removed to last, one third? If there are 10 split points and you want one particular one to be the last to be removed, and this would mean that x is in the same component with this already, the probability is 1 over the distance. For every split point, iterate over every number and add to the answer 1 over distance. That's the probability that when this split point is removed, this number is together with me, uh, multiplied by this value x. With this probability, x is added to the answer at the moment of removing the split point. Give me accepted and tell me that nobody solved. No. So close. So damn close. Then I'm not the one to title my video uh, winning the kickstart road. But I'm so proud of my time in the last problem. Like five minutes. Mm. Damn it. What do we have here? Eight, yeah, eight minutes here. I just spent too much time on the third one. If only William, for example, made a single mistake and got some brain cancer. So not this time. Mm. Okay, I will now stop the recording and add some commentary over the video to upload on YouTube just when the contest ends. Uh, I I think it's obvious here what my opinion is. The problems were way too easy and standard. I will not even comment the first two, but uh, combination lock is just uh, trivial to pointers. And merge cards... Merge cards w was fine. It was a nice problem. Mm. But th th those are just too standard. It's, uh, it's as if they didn't have like original new problems. I would even guess that something like combination lock I already solved. Mm, I I thought for a moment whether maybe it's better to use mm, maybe better to use what? Uh, yeah, prefix sums and some binary search. I went with pointers and spent too much time there. Cool. Thank you for watching and congrats to William for winning. For sure, there will be his video as well. Maybe I will even link it, link it in comments or description. Yep, thanks. Bye bye. Also, I messaged William Lin that I will pay him ten dollars if he resubmits uh, his problem, uh, any of his problems, so that I would win and he would be, you know, later in the leaderboard. He didn't answer yet. Actually, he did answer, and uh, he said that well, th that's actually impossible because the submission would be ignored. So yeah. Uh, it's impossible for me to win, even if William collaborates with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, huge congrats for him. And to you, thank you for watching and tell me in the comments if you like this format or what you would change. Bye bye.